I think before you hire, you need to define the role. So actually figuring out like it's in a perfect world for whatever this is, sales service or whatever, write down the characteristics of the person that would be perfect for your agency. Insurance dudes are on a mission to escape being handcuffed by our agencies. How? By uncovering the secrets to creating a predictable, consistent, and profitable agency sales machine. I am Craig Pretzinger. I am Jason Feldman. We are agents. We are insurance dudes. Right now, while it's fresh in your mind, check out live.teledudes.com. We took our notes from over 100 interviews with top agents from around the country and made it into a live webcast. Using these strategies led Craig and I to selling more than 10 million in premium in the last two years. On this call, you'll receive the exact blueprint to get the same results. Just go to live.teledudes.com to register for this upcoming Tuesday's live call with us. If you jump on this call with us, we're certain 2022 will be an absolutely fantastic year for you. See you there. Mm, we're back. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. I love moving over to hiring. We've been working on a little bit of sales, been working on the telefunnel, all kinds of great stuff in the prior playbooks. But here we are in another playbook, which we won't even number unless Mr. Jason does. And yeah, let's hit the top three hiring mistakes that we see all the time and that you and I have inevitably done multiple times. Right. Well, why don't you just dive into those top three? Sure. So the biggest, biggest, biggest mistake, and this is something that becomes cyclical, right? And, and can really, really damage an organization, even as small as a one or two, three person shop, which is hiring out of need, oh, right? Because yes. hiring from need is going to create future need. You're going to need to do it again because you're going to get the wrong person because it just keeps happening over and over and over. This used to happen to me a lot. I was not good at this. Not good. Uh, so tend right. to like everybody and uh, think everybody's great. And uh, when when somebody leaves, because then they weren't great, then they left, then, oh, no, got to get somebody new. Same thing, right? Creates a cycle of yep. perpetual terribleness. So we don't ever <laughs> want to hire because we need. It's better to be almost down without somebody than it is to have the wrong person in the place. Right. They're going to cost you a ton and they're going to make your hair turn gray or grayer yep. or fall out. So we don't want that to happen, right? So we yep. need to avoid be – if we're in the situation where you need somebody right now, be even more careful about who you bring on. It's right. imperative. I know that the clock is ticking and another month has gone by and, oh, no, what am I going to do? Well, this has got to be the number one focus, right? This has to be the biggest goal that you have in front of you right now. So that's the first thing is hiring out of need. Yep. Now, another thing is hiring just to fill that spot because somebody has that experience. So, oh, wow, they were sales. So they're going to be good. I'll just bring them on and go and move in quick, right? We have to avoid the hire fast mentality. We got to take our time and really, really make sure they're the right person. Now, I think that sometimes this gets mis misunderstood. What we mean when we say hire slow doesn't mean that the process is super slow and needs to go a month before you bring them on, but it means you need to put enough candidates through the thing because you bring in one or two and one of them is going to be better than the other and that's who you're going to settle on versus bring in, you know, talk to 20 because only one of the 20 is going to be the one that you want. And it's really critical to see enough people to get through that. Right. Right? Yep. Right. Right. And then uh, number three, hire... Oh, this one. This one is another this is giant the mistake. One. It's the big one, right? Is hiring somebody because they have insurance experience or worse, because they work for your carrier. They know the systems. I don't have to... I'm not going to have to train them. It's, it's like it's the easy way out, right? It's the quick fix. And I'll tell you, if somebody is really good and they know your system, then I'd have a big question mark over my head. Why did the other person let them leave? Yep. Right. So, so that's really the important. bottom line. Like that was the number one thing I looked for when I first came to this agency was somebody that had a license that was in another agency. And it was, I mean, it worked out. 
a couple times, but most of the time, I'd say like 80% of those were all, um, they brought in their bad habits and I was doing things a little differently. And I like to, you know, I have a different uh, philosophy on teams and stuff like that. And most agencies don't have the same kind of outlook I do. So, yeah. um, so let's talk about how to correct those three mistakes. Mm-hmm. Um, Why you dive in? <clears throat> sure. Yeah. So I think before you hire, you need to define the role. So actually figuring out like it's in a perfect world for whatever this is, sales service or whatever, write down the characteristics of the person that would be perfect for your agency and what they're going to do and define that role very clearly. Yeah, uh, I think a lot of times we just kind of just hire and like, oh, they could do this. They could do that. Right. Right. So define that. I think number one would be def- defined it. And then when you do hire, hire for that role, but also hire for the culture you want. Yeah. Because you can train somebody to do anything. You can train yeah. them to work a system or or something like that, right? But you can't train them to come in to your agency. You already know what your culture is like, what your agents love and the kind of atmosphere you want, the kind of atmosphere that you're leading. You got to hire for that. Like yeah. that you want somebody that comes in that makes everyone even better just by them being there, right. regardless of skill. And you don't want to sugarcoat anything. If the role involves making 200 dials a day, it's got to be there. And you have to find, it's not trick somebody into coming on and then spring it on them. They're going to be making 200 dials a day. It's find the people. If that's part of it, if that's one of the roles, then you got to find somebody who can do that, not change the position to fit the personality, but find the personality that fits the position. Right. hundred percent. Yeah critical. So there's three questions that we like to ask ourselves when we're hiring someone. Yes. So the first, do they have natural talent? So do they have the raw natural skill set built into their DNA, if you will, that will help match and get them successful with that entire position that you've crafted? Right. So do they? And remember, this is really critical to, to remember is they're never going to be better than they are in that interview, right? They're at the top of their game because they want the job, right? They're yep. here because they want to get hired and they're going to do everything possible and say everything to get that job. So you have to be able to craft questions that are going to not trick them. You don't want to trick them. It's none of that, but but you have to be perceptive and not just have some conversation with them. There has to be some strategy behind this thing. So what are some things you can do? You could stick them on the phone and see if they how they perform. To put them on the phone and have them make a couple dials. See how that goes. We've stuck them on the dialer and I've actually hired a couple people because of how they performed on the they're like, sure, I'll get on. Right. If you ask somebody, hey, look, I'd like to put you on the dialer and see how you performed, this is what you're going to say, go. And they're like, oh, well, I'm not, you know, if they start giving that, it's probably not going to be a fit, right? If it's somebody that's going to have to make a lot of dials. You don't want to see any hesitation. Right. And are they driven for the position? Uh Uh-huh. Are they really into this? Yeah. You can make them sell you something? Yeah. And then number three, could they learn it and excel in this position? Do you think that they could do that? Right. You got to know. And I think those three questions are interesting because if they're a yes across the board, it's like, boom, you know, you made the right decision. Maybe they don't have the natural talent, but they're super driven and you think that they could learn it and that they could excel at it. Well, there you go. You have some decision making, right? Yeah. I think Um, you really ultimately want to get a yes to all three, right? In order to, to make the decision to move forward with somebody. That would be the best. The best would be all three. The like, worst say, would, be, <laughs> would be none of them. Well, of course. Um, and then that's a definite no. But I think ideally you want to have your own funnel that is of candidates. And you want to have a nice, especially if you're hiring right now for one position, you want to talk to a good 20 people at the minimum and get a smaller group of three to five people that meet this criteria, right? That are three yeses across the board with those people. And now you whittle it down 
from those, bring them in for a final interview, which one makes it or do two of them make it or three of them, right? I mean, there's never, I don't think I'm ever going to push somebody away if they meet all the right criteria and it looks like it's going to be a win. Right. Because they're going to make you money. 100%. You know, and I do like bringing on more than one person at the same time so they can kind of go against, or, you know, out try to outdo each other, especially for the sales role. You want competitive. I mean, that's at the end of the day, you got to have competitive. Right. I, I would almost never bring on one person at a time. The amount of energy you have to spend and they don't always work out. So then you're spending twice as much time where if you hire two people for each position, then you keep the best one right. or you keep them both because they're so good. Win-win. Right. <laughs> Win-win. But how often is it actually both of them make it? Almost never. Right. Which costs you a little bit. Again, it's one of these things. It costs you a little bit more because you hedge your bet, right? I brought on two. One of them is probably going to – one will make it, one won't. Well, okay, so it costs double for a month, but you got the right one versus only taking one of them, but you make the wrong call and it's the wrong one and now you got to start over again. Right. And I don't want that. Yep. And but that's a playbook. It is a play. It's That's a page out of the playbook. So you can That's right. pop it in the end zone. <laughs> pop it in the end zone. Yeah, get across the red zone. <laughs> all right. All right, all right. Hey, what are you still doing here? Well, while you're still here, and while it's fresh in your mind, check out live.teledudes.com. Yeah, if you weren't listening before, we took notes from over 100 interviews with top agents from around the country and made it into a live webcast. Using these strategies did help Craig and I write over 10 million in premium in the last couple of years. And let me tell you, on this call, you'll receive the exact blueprint to get the very same results. Again, that's live.teledudes.com to register for this upcoming Tuesday's live call with us. And if you jump on with us, we are certain 2022 will be an absolutely fantastic year for you. See you there.